Hey there, and welcome to day 223 of the Bible in a Year podcast. Our reading today is Isaiah chapter 13, verse 17, to chapter 19, verse 10. We hope you enjoy today's reading. Behold, I am stirring up the midst against them, who have no regard for silver and do not delight in gold. Their bows will slaughter the young men. They will have no mercy on the fruit of the womb. Their eyes will not pity children. And Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the splendor and pomp of the Chaldeans, will be like Sodom and Gomorrah when God overthrew them. It will never be inhabited or lived in for all generations. No Arab will pitch his tent there no shepherds will make their flocks lie down there, but wild animals will lie down there, and their houses will be full of howling creatures. Their ostriches will dwell, and their wild goats will dance. Hyenas will cry in its towers, and jackals in the pleasant palaces. Its time is close at hand, and its days will not be prolonged. For the Lord will have compassion on Jacob and will again choose Israel and will set them in their own land. And sojourners will join them and will attach themselves to the house of Jacob. And the peoples will take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel will possess them in the Lord's land as male and female slaves. They will take captive those who are their captors and rule over those who oppressed them. When the Lord has given you rest from your pain and turmoil and the hard service with which you are made to serve, you will take up this taunt against the king of Babylon. How the oppressor has seized, the insolent fury seized. The Lord has broken the staff of the wicked, the scepter of rulers that struck the peoples in wrath with unceasing blows, that ruled the nations in anger with unrelenting persecution. The whole earth is at rest and quiet. They break forth into singing. The cypresses rejoice at you, the cedars of Lebanon, saying, Since you are laid low, no woodcutter comes up against us. Sheol beneath is stirred up to meet you when you come. It rouses the shades to greet you, all who are leaders of the earth. It raises from their thrones all who are kings of the nations. All of them will answer and say to you, You too have become as weak as we. You have become like us. Your pomp is brought down to Sheol, the sound of your harps. Maggots are laid as a bed beneath you, and worms are your covers. How you are fallen from heaven, O Desta, son of dawn! How you are cut down to the ground, you who laid the nations low. You said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven above the stars of God. I will set my throne on high. I will sit on the mount of assembly in the far reaches of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will make myself like the most high. But you are brought down to Sheol, to the far reaches of the pit. Those who see you will stare at you and ponder over you. Is this the man who made the earth tremble? who shook kingdoms, who made the world like a desert and overthrew its cities, who did not let his prisoners go home. All the kings of the nations lie in glory, each in his own tomb. But you are cast out, away from your grave, like a loathed branch, clothed with the slain, those pierced by the sword, who go down to the stones of the pit, like a dead body trampled underfoot. You will not be joined with them in burial because 
you have destroyed your land. You have slain your people. May the offspring of evildoers never more be named. Prepare slaughter for his sons because of the guilt of their fathers, lest they rise and possess the earth and fill the face of the world with cities. I will rise up against them, declares the Lord of hosts, and will cut off from Babylon name and remnant, descendants and posterity, declares the Lord. And I will make it a possession of the hedgehog and pools of water, and I will sweep it with the broom of destruction, declares the Lord of hosts. The Lord of hosts has sworn, As I have planned, so shall it be, and as I have purposed, so shall it stand, that I will break the Assyrian in my land, and on my mountains trample him underfoot, and his yoke shall depart from them, and his burden from their shoulder. This is the purpose that is purposed concerning the whole earth, and this is the hand that is stretched out over all the nations. For the Lord of hosts has purposed, and who will annul it? His hand is stretched out, and who will turn it back? In the year that King Ahaz died came this oracle. Rejoice not, O Philistia, all of you, that the rod that struck you is broken. For from the serpent's root will come forth an adder, and its fruit will be a flying, fiery serpent, and the firstborn of the poor will graze, and the needy lie down in safety. But I will kill your root with famine, and your remnant it will slay. Wail, O gate, cry out, O city, melt in fear, O Philistia, all of you. For smoke comes out of the north, and there is no straggler in his ranks. What will one answer the messengers of the nation? The Lord has founded Zion, and in her the afflicted of his people find refuge. An oracle concerning Moab, because Ar of Moab is laid waste in a night, Moab is undone. Because Kir of Moab is laid waste in a night, Moab is undone. He has gone up to the temple and to Dibon, to the high places to weep, over Nebo and over Mediba. Moab wails. On every head is baldness, every beard is shorn. In the streets they wear sackcloth, on the housetops and in the squares. Everyone wails and melts in tears. Heshbon and Eliela cry out. Their voice is heard as far as Jehaz. Therefore the armed men of Moab cry aloud. His soul trembles. My heart cries out for Moab. Her fugitives flee to Zoar, to Eglath Shelishia. For at the ascent of Luhith they go up weeping. On the road to Horeneum, they raise a cry of destruction. The waters of Nimurim are a desolation. The grass is withered. The vegetation fails. The greenery is no more. Therefore, the abundance they have gained, and what they have laid up, they carry away over the brook of the willows. For a cry has gone around the land of Moab, her wailing reaches to Eglir. Her wailing reaches to Beailim. For the waters of Dibon are full of blood. For I will bring upon Dibon even more, a lion for those of Moab who escape, for the remnant of the land. Send the lamb to the ruler of the land. From Sila, by way of the desert, to the mount of the daughter of Zion, like fleeing birds, like a scattered nest, so are the daughters of Moab, at the fords of the Anon. Give counsel, grant justice, make your shade like night at the height of noon, shelter the outcasts, do not reveal the fugitive, 
let the outcasts of Moab sojourn among you. Be a shelter to them from the destroyer. When the oppressor is no more and destruction has ceased and he who tramples underfoot has vanished from the land, then a throne will be established in steadfast love and on it will sit in faithfulness in the tent of David, one who judges and seeks justice and is swift to do righteousness. We have heard of the pride of Moab, how proud he is, of his arrogance, his pride, and his insolence. In his idle boasting, he is not right. Therefore, let Moab wail for Moab. Let everyone wail, mourn, utterly stricken, for the raisin cakes of Kirhareseth, for the fields of Heshbon languish, and the vine of Sibma, the lords of the nations have struck down its branches which reached to Jeza and strayed to the desert its shoots spread abroad and passed over the sea. Therefore I weep with the weeping of Jeza for the vine of Sibma. I drench you with my tears O Heshbon and Eliela for over your summer fruit and your harvest the shout has ceased and joy and gladness are taken away from the fruitful field, and in the vineyards no songs are sung, no tears are raised, no trader treads out wine in the presses. I have put an end to the shouting, therefore my inner parts mourn like a lyre for Moab, and my inmost self for Kia Hireseth, And when Moab presents himself, when he wearies himself on the high place, when he comes to his sanctuary to pray, he will not prevail. This is the word that the Lord spoke concerning Moab in the past. But now the Lord has spoken, saying, In three years, like the years of a hired worker, the glory of Moab will be brought into contempt in spite of all his great multitude, and those who remain will be very few and feeble. An oracle concerning Damascus. Behold, Damascus will cease to be a city and will become a heap of ruins. The cities of Aroa are deserted. They will be for flocks, which will lie down and none will make them afraid. The fortress will disappear from Ephraim and the kingdom from Damascus, and the remnant of Syria will be like the glory of the children of Israel, declares the Lord of hosts. And in that day the glory of Jacob will be brought low, and the fat of his flesh will grow lean, and it shall be as when the reaper gathers standing grain, and his arm harvests the ears, and as when one gleans the ears of grain in the valley of Rephaim, gleanings will be left in it, as when an olive tree is beaten, two or three berries in the top of the highest bough, four or five on the branches of a fruit tree declares the Lord God of Israel. In that day, man will look to his Maker, and his eyes will look on the Holy One of Israel. He will not look to the altars, the work of his hands, and he will not look on what his own fingers have made, either the ashram or the altars of incense. In that day, their strong cities will be like the deserted places of the wooden heights and the hilltops, which they deserted because of the children of Israel, and there will be desolation. For you have forgotten the God of your salvation, and have not remembered the rock of your refuge. Therefore, 
though you plant pleasant plants and sow the vine branch of a stranger, though you make them grow on the day that you plant them and make them blossom in the morning that you sow, yet the harvest will flee away in a day of grief and incurable pain. Ah, the thunder of many peoples, the thunder like the thundering of the sea. Ah, the roar of nations, they roar like the roaring of mighty waters. The nations roar like the roaring of many waters, but he will rebuke them, and they will flee far away, chased like chaff on the mountains before the wind and whirling dust before the storm. At evening time, behold, terror, before morning, they are no more. This is the portion of those who loot us and the lot of those who plunder us. Ah, land of warring wings that is beyond the rivers of Cush, which sends ambassadors by the sea in vessels of papyrus on the waters. Go, you swift messengers, to a nation tall and smooth, to a people feared near and far, a nation mighty and conquering, whose land the rivers divide. All you inhabitants of the world, you who dwell on the earth, when a signal is raised on the mountains, look, when a trumpet is blown, hear, for thus the Lord said to me, I will quietly look from my dwelling, like clear heat in sunshine, like a cloud of dew in the heat of harvest. For before the harvest, when the blossom is over, and the flower becomes a ripening grape, he cuts off the shoots with pruning hooks, and the spreading branches he lops off and clears away. They shall all of them be left to the birds of prey of the mountains, and to the beasts of the earth. And the birds of prey will summer on them, and all the beasts of the earth will winter on them. At that time, tribute will be brought to the Lord of hosts, from a people tall and smooth, from a people feared near and far, a nation mighty and conquering, whose land the rivers divide, to Mount Zion, the place of the name of the Lord of hosts. An oracle concerning Egypt. Behold, the Lord is riding on a swift cloud and comes to Egypt, and the idols of Egypt will tremble at his presence, and the heart of the Egyptians will melt within them. And I will stir up Egyptians against Egyptians, and they will fight each against another, and each against his neighbor, city against city, kingdom against kingdom. And the spirit of the Egyptians within them will be emptied out, and I will confound their counsel, and they will inquire of the idols and the sorcerers, and the mediums and the necromancers, and I will give over the Egyptians into the hand of a hard master, and a fierce king will rule over them, declares the Lord God of hosts. And the waters of the sea will be dried up, and the river will be dry and parched, and its canals will become foul, and the branches of Egypt's Nile will diminish and dry up. Reeds and rushes will rot away. There will be bare places by the Nile, on the brink of the Nile. And all that is sown by the Nile will be patched, will be driven away, and will be no more. The fishermen will mourn and lament, all who cast a hook in the Nile, and they will languish, who spread nets on the water. The workers in combed flax will be in despair, and the weavers of white cotton. Those who are the pillars of the land 
will be crushed and all who work for pay will be grieved. <laughs>